All right, and I think we're live. Hey guys, what's going on? My name is Tuvas, and welcome back to another DCS World live stream. In today's live stream, we're going to be taking on the KA-50 in Georgia at War and seeing what kind of trouble we could get ourselves into. Also, do note, this is currently the wild wild west of potential hackers and griefers. So if I suddenly explode out of nowhere, and it was not because of, let's say, a tank or something shooting at me, eh, it's possible that it was due to a griefer, but uh, we'll see. We'll see how that turns out. If you guys don't know what I'm talking about, just check out R. Hoggett. And there's been a post there by myself uh, highlighting what to look out for when someone is potentially griefing slash hacking. Anyways, guys, let's see what kind of trouble we can get ourselves into today. Do that and that. I've been practicing a little bit with a K50. Uh, thanks to Volk and his wonderful tutorials. Because I wanted, I, for a while now, I've been wanting to put together a gamepad layout for this thing. And I just never actually bothered putting in the time for it. But it turns out it's actually not that difficult to, uh, to put together. At least something that's useful. It's actually pretty nice, if I'm going to be honest. Also, you may hear uh, the sound of utensils clinking in the background because I am in the middle of eating dinner as well. Uh, for anyone who's curious what I'm eating, it is corned beef hash with rice. It is my mom's recipe for feeding us six kids cheaply and efficiently. She's able to make tons of corned beef, enough for six kids, and that should hold us over for like a day. <laughs> Sounds like there's an A-10 flying overhead. Unfortunately, I can't really look around behind me. Uh, but yeah, so there should be a total of like 30-something targets nearby. But unfortunately, based on, the <laughs> based on the map, it looks like there's three A-10s in the area. Um, so... It's possible that all these targets are no longer going to be a factor. However, there is also an enemy MIG or flanker in the area as well. So those A-10s may have their hands full if they're not careful. All right, let's go ahead and finish the startup process. I knew. Move on to the next one. Three data link. And yeah, I'll set it to that. Turn those on. Okay. Hey, Neil. Fly the Apache. Fly the Apache. been doing a lot of that lately. I thought it was, uh, it might be interesting to take a break from it. Did I not hit start? There we go. Also, I remember to change the latency between receiving comment like uh, messages in the chat versus when I when that like let's say for example you send a message to me via chat then I read it and then respond to it hopefully there's not too much desync between those two different times when you actually hear me respond C101 if you're good <laughs> unfortunately I don't own the C101 but I hear it's a great module but yes I, I agree only good pilots fly the L39 and C101 because those things are so difficult. <laughs> it's so difficult to use, especially for air to ground. Okay. Let's go ahead and stop the APU. Turn on our generators. Throttle up. Alright, I 
think we're pretty much good to go. We are armed up. All our systems are online. Unless I forgot something major. Uh, standby, AI. Um, probably radio is something I need. One, three, three. I don't want to turn that down, but I don't know if there's a volume knob somewhere. <laughs> I know, right? Watch Ikran. Check all parameters. Means your mission. Also, I find it very interesting that uh, I am unable currently to manage my stream. So if I go to create, go live, go to stream. Ah, here we go, that's why. I was at the wrong one. Okay. I think I'm going to turn that off for now. Because I have the map on the side, so I can use that for reference in case it, there's threats nearby. Hmm, oh good. Once again, I'm also eating dinner at the same time. Okay, uh, let's see. We're good to go. Let's figure out what targets are nearby us. I'm pretty sure it's two by targets. Uh, I think it's these 33 nautical mile ones. Let's actually just double check really quick. There's one in a city. ED's QA department. And then there's this guy all the way down here out in the open. So we're going to focus on ED's Q QA department. Oh, it's four nautical miles. Holy crap, that is right next door to us. Which makes sense, given the distance between here and there. So this will be interesting. Uh, okay, cool. I guess that'll be our main focus. So let's get that coordinate entered in before we take off so we know uh, just how far away this sucker is in terms of meters. Because I can't do that stuff on the fly. In fact, we can already see some units right there on the map. That's kind of funny. Okay, uh, let's go to enter waypoints. Uh, one, two, oh, one, two. There we go. And of course, that went away as I was entering it. Current, current missions. All right, four, five, oh, eight, five, five, four, five. Oh, eight, I guess round up, six, enter, zero, three, eight, oh, eight, three, eight, oh, oh, damn it, damn it, no, okay, I'm gonna have to use my mouse for this, I know, blasphemy, four, five, oh, eight, six, because I'm rounding up since it's a five. Oh, wait, but are these in seconds? I don't think those are in seconds. Oh, well, whatever. It's close enough. One, one, zero. zero. Left shift Y to get rid of the mailbox. One, oh, this guy one, over here. Ah, oh, good point. Declare. Oh, left shift Y. Nope. Left control, left shift Y. Yeah, that's what it was. Uh, oh, and of course, let's get that again. Get current missions, air interdiction. Uh, 3808. 3808. And let's just make that zero. Okay. Now let's go to operate, waypoint two. It is a grand total of... Oh my god. Okay, so <laughs> we're we're really close as is. Uh, so I have a feeling we're just going to pop up and then try to take things out as they become visible because that's super close. Okay. Fun times. Let's do it. Laser on. Systems armed. Gear up. Overlord one 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 zero seven. Request bogey dope. And let's go ahead and auto turn. And on route.
Okay, so like I said, we are not going to get too much closer because we're already, looks like, seven and a half kilometers away. So I'm just going to get out of the way of anyone that's going to be respawning or spawning at this farp. So in fact, master arm on, set it to manual, low, and armor piercing. All right. And let's go ahead and uh, chill here. Uh-oh, my dog is giving me the sounds. He's asking for something. What's up, dog? Sorry, buddy. Do you want some rice? Here. Here's some plain white rice. Come. Come. There you go, buddy. There. You get that. Now, leave me alone. Oh, curry. Now let's see what the hell is out there. So we're going to pop up slowly and see if we can avoid dying. Because for all I know, there is going to be threats like Tunguska's, uh, SA9's, SAMs, or man pads of some kind. Who knows? I just need to keep uh, referencing the Abris. Don't pop up too fast. Overlord one, 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 zero, seven. Okay, we're going to hang out here for a little bit and see if we can't find anything just yet. I, I seriously Overlord doubt we will. One, 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 zero, seven. But, um... Yeah, there's the trees are just way too dense. I'm a little tempted to like just backpedal a little bit. Overlord, one, 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 zero, Let's see, is this declare. building? Yeah, that building is basically the distance that we want to be looking at. So it's about eight thousand. That's actually reasonably far. So we'll go ahead and pick up a little bit more altitude. Overlord, one, one, oh my one, god. Zero, seven. Hello, welcome to the stream. Okay, that's high enough. Let's take a gander. Let's see if there's anything visible just yet. I really doubt there is yet, because there's still plenty of trees. What's the distance on this? That's a little far. This a little bit closer. Yeah, that's roughly the, the range we want as well. Okay, let's pop up a little more. Hey, Pippin. You want some more white rice? Here you go, buddy. Yeah, you like that. Is there an, any way to make DCS more easy to play? It's too many buttons? Unfortunately, no. Uh, DCS is what is usually considered a study sim. So you're, I mean, aside from like, you know, general maintenance and pre-flight checks and things like that, if you have a plane that is ready to go for a pilot, technically, for example, if you were to learn how to start up the FA-18C, technically you could maybe hop into a real one and know how to start it up. Of course, you'll be a threat to yourself and others, and I do not recommend doing that by no means at all, but theoretically it is indeed at that level of complexity. So unfortunately, the, uh, there's no real way to make it easier unless you were to activate game mode. And honestly, game mode isn't all that great. So I personally wouldn't even recommend doing that. Um, yeah. That's, yeah, that, that's about as good as it's going to get, I think. Or as easy as it's going to get, I should say. So, ah, oh man, I feel like there is something right here somewhere. Just based on the Abris. In fact, let me zoom in on the Abris. There's literally something like right here somewhere. Hmm. 
Okay, let's go ahead and chill. Because I already see a tank. Hold altitude and fire. Oh, and fire. And while we wait for that missile, I am going to get another bite. Oh, so good. Oh, corned beef. You guys don't know how to make corned beef? Look it up. It is so good. Bunch of potatoes, tomatoes, onions, garlic, the usual stuff. Oh, please tell me that died. Oh, thank God. Okay. Yeah, oh. I think I'm just outside the range of this guy to, to not be a problem for him. I'm going to pop a couple flares just in case. Jesus Christ. No, I don't know if it's going to reach. Oh, thank God. Oh, boy. That, I'm pretty sure, was a Tunguska. Oh, man, that was, uh, that was looking on my part. If it was any closer, like, if he was here instead, oh, man, I would have been dead. Supposedly there was someone, like, right here. But I don't see him. So let's, uh, let's go to move on to another dot. That's on the Abrus there on the right. So what I'm doing is I'm aligning my targeting pod in the general location of where the Abrus is, tell is telling me there should be a unit. And supposedly there's one within these trees as well, so I'm going to have to reposition for those. Uh, so let's go for another one. Nothing there. Nothing there. Again, a bunch of trees. Oh, there we go. That is not on the Abrus, probably because it's not an air threat. Once again, while we wait for that missile, I'm going to chow down. Oh. But yeah, like I was saying, corned beef hash. Basically, you start off with, um, with onions and garlic. Throw that in. Cook it on medium to slightly medium high until the onions are at your preferred clearness. I don't like them too clear because uh, I don't like it too soft. Uh, but cook those for as long as you need. Right after those are ready, you'll want to dump a bunch of potatoes. In my case, I use two, uh, two potatoes. I forget the, the type they are. They're the, they're the brown potatoes. Russell, I think. Russet? Russell? Um, then you cook those with everything, with what you put in earlier, until the potato, like uh, diced potatoes, assuming you've diced them, are nice and soft. Basically to the point where your spatula can like basically uh, cut one in half without too much effort. Then once the potatoes get to that point, you throw in the meat, in this case corned beef, the Hereford corned beef, that's, uh, that's the brand I use. Cook that for a little bit, just a tiny little bit, because right after that, you're going to throw in diced tomatoes. So basically, mix up the meat with the potatoes, just Warning. enough so everything... Oh. Under attack. Under attack. Yeah, nope. Not going to play with that. I'm going to assume I was being shot at. That was to my front right. Okay, uh, if that's the case, I'm going to extend a little bit. Let's clear our ra laser warning system, and we'll extend back just a bit so we, you know, don't die. Because it's always nice not dying. It's one of my favorite things to do. I don't know about you guys, but I very much enjoy not dying. In fact, I would say it's probably one of my most favorite things to do. Let's uh, turn off auto turn for now. Alright, uh, and we are now at 
a solid eight kilometers. What do you have bound to override the trim control? Oh, I just press and hold trim. <laughs> That's what I do. So if I suddenly need to to bounce around like that and just like get away, I just hold trim and then manipulate the rest of my controls until I'm happy and safe. So for instance, I dove and turned around, and then when I turned around and got on a stable path, that's when I finally let go of the trim hat. And for me, trim is set to the Y button. Okay. There we go. I'll set it to auto turn. Alright, this looks safe enough. Let's trim again so that our cyclic is more or less centered. Okay, this is pretty safe now. This is pretty far away. Uh, let's... I'm drifting a little bit more to the left, but hopefully it stops at some point. If not, I'll just do that and trim again. There we go. Okay. Turn off altitude hold and let's pop up again. So usually, you don't get a laser warning unless you're being shot at by a TV guided missile of some kind. So uh, ATGM, I think is what it's called. And those are usually fired by tanks. And they typically don't engage you until pretty close. Like, we're talking probably like, I don't know, six kilometers maybe? So if they're able to engage you, you're way too close. So that's why I wanted to back off as quickly as possible. Uh, but for now, let's use this as a point of reference. That's 9.6 kilometers away. So that's, that's even further than I can reach. So this should put me in a good position to get an idea of what's out there. And then, from once I get an idea of what's out there, I can slowly creep my way forward in auto hover mode. Speaking of which, I'm not even in auto hover. Wow, that's crazy. I was hovering without auto hover? Huh. Not bad. Uh, I'm a little impressed. Good job, T-Bots. <laughs> uh, but anyways, let's see if we can figure out what the hell shot at us. We just need to get quite a bit of altitude so we can see what the hell's out there. In fact, let's move this over to a known target location. Because we have repositioned just a little bit. So let's see if we can uh, take advantage of that. And nope, still hidden amongst trees. Although I do see an opening coming up. So once we get, oh, we're going a little fast in the vertical speed. Also, another thing I did is I bound the uh, reset button for the laser warning receiver, or laser warning system, to my left stick click. Because I just learned this recently, that the red lights appear, but then they don't go away. So if you want a fresh look at what's been firing at you, you need to press reset, and then it'll give you a new s indication of where that fire was coming from. Uh, otherwise, eventually, at some point, all the lights will be on and they'll never shut off. Oh, and that is a sign of interest. See that smoke trail? There is something there. Okay, we're going to keep on climbing until we find that particular unit. What did he shoot at? Huh. fact, what is that close to? Well, yeah, looks like we're right on top of one of the known units. We're going to stay zoomed out a little bit, keep an eye on the area, make sure we don't see any smoke trails coming towards us. What is that in the distance? Oh, it's uh, an Apache. I see. So there, there's an Apache out there that's trying to do some work, but uh, he's quite oblivious, I think, to the units that are down there. Oh, no, no, he's not. He's diving. He is diving. 
flaring. Oh, good job, man. Oh, and there's another... I think that might be a man pad. I could probably just launch a missile nearby that location, and then it should take whatever it is out. So let's say I aim for that. Oh, but I'm way too far away, though. All right, we're going to have to start creeping, uh, creeping forward a little bit. So let's do that. Just hold the stick forward for a little bit, build up some speed, then once I let go of the stick, it should bring me back to a stop. Also, altitude hold for the meantime. And just keep an eye on the area while we approach it. Oh, <laughs> looks like they are trying to uh, take it out. Oh man, there's also additional fire coming from over here. So we have a couple units here. Oh my god. That is a bunch of stuff happening. And that unit may be taken care of at this point. Dude, he is going ham. Whoever that Apache pilot is, I think we've switched roles. I'm attacking from far away. Meanwhile, he's just going balls to the walls. Oh, you know what? It might have been this guy. Which is kind of weird. I thought the smoke trail was coming from behind these trees. Okay, we're going to stop at 8.5. In fact, let's go ahead and start slowing down. Because 8.5 is about as close as I want to get. Especially at this altitude. Alright, so... There's the Apache. Damn, dude. This guy is making it work. Now, let's watch this guy for a little bit. Let's see what he does. Is he going to attack that tank? He's looking right at it. Wait, no he's not. Do I have to save this guy? I'm not close enough. Dude. Take it out. No! <laughs> no! Oh, he almost had him too. Ah, oh, dude, that sucks so hard. Ah, oh, no. Sorry, buddy. I'll avenge you. I'll take out this tank, even though I think there's more pressing matters. So once again, eight and a half. I don't think this will reach at nine kilometers. That's more of a, uh, that's at the limits of a hellfire shot. Six jets are just going to be an issue for you. Oh no, they definitely don't ignore me. So I'm going to have to. I'm definitely going to have to rely on um, on friendly cap to be in the area. Uh, so yeah, jets definitely won't ignore me. So hanging out this high is very risky. However, I know that our airspace is not contested at the moment, so that shouldn't be an issue. Okay, we're at 8.5. Let's see if that's far enough or close enough, I should say. And while that's on its way, I'm going to take another bite of, the, of my dinner. Hi. What's up, buddy? Want another bite? Here. Uh, that either did zero damage or it fell short. I'm willing to bet it fell short, though. So I'm going to close the distance a little more. Just a little more. Probably down to 8k. That's about as close as I'm willing to get, though. Yeah, I have 8 more missiles. And there are supposedly six more targets. Honestly, less because I think you only have to kill like 80% of the units and then it's considered a done mission. 
3.2. Keeping an eye out just in case. How effective is the KA-50 versus the Apache? The KA-50 will absolutely dominate the Apache, in, like in an air-to-air -air battle. The Apache pilot will have zero options unless they get super close with their gun, and honestly, that's about it. The, uh, even if they could get a Hellfire shot, just head on, like let's say Hellfire versus Vicar, Vicar's gonna win. It's a lot faster, it does not lob. Technically, the Apache would maybe have range against the Vicar, but honestly, that's not as much of a factor. Uh, now, keep in mind, I'm not like a pilot or anything, so I don't know the actual numbers or anything. But based on what I've seen in DCS and how the different missiles perform, basically the Vicar has slightly shorter range, but it's faster. Uh, and it's very much a direct route from aircraft to, to target, whereas the Hellfire is slower because it kind of lobs up and over towards the target. So it's slower as a result, but it's also got a longer range because of that. Because it lobs. Uh, let's see. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Supposedly, there is, I think, a target here somewhere? No? Let's see if there's one right here, this circle here. Supposedly, there is something right here. It's behind trees. How about ground to ground? Oh, like air to ground? Uh, so, as far as like air to ground tactics and dealing with targets on the ground, uh, the Apache. The Apache, I, f I do think, is a, a far better system. Uh, mainly because I like their doctrine more, which is basically to stay as far away as possible and kill things from a distance. Uh, which is why I'm doing this now, which is why I'm kind of doing a similar tactic where I stay as far away as I can and then kill things from a distance. Uh, that's my preferred method for helicopter attack, uh, attack tactics. Uh, so in in my own opinion, the uh, yeah, I would say the Apache is a lot better in that regard. Supposedly there's something here. I don't see it. I might have to reposition. But let's uh, let's scan the city and make sure there's nothing else before we reposition and then get fired on because we're still too close. Okay, so supposedly this will be more or less the outer bounds of where these enemy units are. On your binds for the K-50, the autopilots with the right bumper modifier, do those turn off the modes on that? Yes, they do. So, basically, you could think of pitch hold being Y, bank hold being X, alt hold being B, and then heading hold being A. So because when you look down at this panel, it's kind of like cockeyed anyway, so it looks more like a diamond than a square, you can equate that to the, to the diamond-shaped face buttons. So Y, X, B, A. And that's how you know which one's which. And same thing on this side slightly. I have auto turn set to D-pad up. For left modifier, D-pad up. Air to air is left modifier, D-pad left. Moving ground target is left modifier, D-pad down. And because I was recommended not to worry about this binding, I instead set <laughs> left modifier, D-pad right to, uh, yeah. So anyways, um, let's find these targets. Actually, before we do that, eh, okay, get out of the way. <laughs> I know, it's completely useless. I just couldn't really think of what else to put there. Uh, maybe I could put that air-to-air, -air, uh, that alternate option for air-to-air -air mode. Uh, but, I mean, I was told it was not really necessary to bind. So I'm not going to bother. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to reposition a little bit and find the remaining targets. Like, supposedly there's someone here as well. Smart, I've been going through all your bind profiles while I'm away on... <laughs> nice, man. Hey, I'm honestly just glad I can help you out. Because I know uh, DCS is not the easiest thing to bring with you on the go. Like, let's say you, like, I don't know, go for a trip somewhere or on a plane, on a cargo plane, who knows. 
or in the back of a, I don't know, the cab of a truck. A HOTAS really doesn't fit well, but a gaming laptop can. And all you really need is a gamepad, so hopefully that helped you guys out. Alright, so I think I'm going to head off in that direction. Because uh, I need to reposition, so I'm going to bring this down. Set this guy over here, probably. And then reposition and then take another look. This should be far enough at... Oh. Actually, that may not be far enough. Let's go a little more to the right. Right around here. And then route engage. Uh, and then I have to trim and then push forward to get some airspeed. Why is there a collective instead of a throttle in helicopters? It, uh, basically, it's kind of a... Um, I don't know how to put it. I don't know the exact history behind it. But generally speaking, helicopters do not have throttles. In, well, they do have throttles, but it's for controlling the, the RPM of their engine. Meanwhile, a collective changes the collective pitch of the blades so that they can choose when to bite or not bite more air to produce lift. So it's not really a throttle in the sense that more throttle equals more thrust, while, and while they could do that, it's not as efficient. Instead, they maintain a steady amount of RPM, or it automatically adjusts based on a governor, that tells it, hey, you need more RPM for this much pitch in the blades. And instead what they do is they change the pitch of the blade in order to increase or decrease their vertical position. So it is a collective movement of the blades on top, thus it's called a collective. Meanwhile, the throttle setting is just how fast the blades turn. You, the blades could turn as fast as you want, but if the collective is not increased, they will not produce lift. Okay. Looking pretty good. This looks like a better position. We haven't been fired at yet, which is a good sign. Okay, let's go ahead and take a break here. And then hover hold and change our direction to there. Auto turn should turn us, very good. Then let's get our eyes back on that area. All right, cool. And we're back on target. Let's also make sure that we are not approaching our target. We are indeed a bit closer than we were before, but it appears to be safe. So now let's review these previously known target locations. So supposedly there is a target among, the, once again, among these trees somewhere, but I don't see anything. Also, it looks like we're moving, so let's pitch back and then force trim. That should stop us, I think. That is super close. If there was a unit there, we're getting pretty close. Come on, come to a stop. Thank you. Okay, cool. Now we are at a stop. So now let's see if we can find the guy that's hiding somewhere here. Like, I feel like I'm blind, but supposedly... He's, like, right there. Maybe he's dead already. Like, he should be, like, right here. Alright, well, let's uh, move on to something else. Look at this guy. 
<laughs> Supposedly is right behind this tree line right here as well. Let's look over here. Among these trees as well, but it looks like he's dead. I think that was maybe the Tunguska I already killed. Someone over there as well. We might have to go on the other side of the trees. Like, oh, that looks very dead. Supposedly there's something else here. Like right behind this building. Oh my god, this is... I am getting so unlucky with my positioning. You think you saw him? Which one? The uh, the first guy? There's a bit of delay between uh, when I see your chat and when you hear me start talking, so... I'm going to assume second to last, and if not that, we'll go back to the first one. Okay, it sounds like it might be the first one. So you think you saw him. Dude, I don't... I, I don't see him. <laughs> Theoretically, he would be somewhere here. Am I blind? I mean, I could just swing off to the left a little bit. Let's put in a little bit at cyclic left and reposition. Upper right. Upper right. Like inside this tree? I don't see anything. I mean, unless I'm like super blind. Hold on, let me, let me adjust the TV settings. Maybe increase the brightness, increase the contrast. Then compare it to the circle. So center of the circle is more or less right here. That is a big old opening. Upper right, upper right, upper right. I don't know, man. I don't see anything. Oh, wait. Are you talking about this? Isn't that just part of a tree? Isn't that like the trunk of a tree? Let's slide off to the left a little bit. Let's see if we can do something about it. Just reposition just a tiny bit. Hmm. Yeah, I don't see anything. Okay, well, let's look for other targets for the time being. Yeah, I think it's a trunk. <laughs> yeah, it's all good. Alright, let's see what else there is. So, here is a tank. Oh, hey, look at that. It's alive. Won't be no more for a second. Alright, I'm going to use this opportunity to take another bite of food. Oh, yeah. Mmm. Eagle, you'd appreciate this. Um. I am having corned beef hash and rice. Classic, I'm pretty sure it's a classic Filipino recipe, but maybe it's in general just a, um, a really just easy to put together recipe. Oh man, but it's so good. Did I miss? What happened there? Okay. I have six more. No, not pancakes. <laughs> it's too late in the day for pancakes. Well... It's never too late for pancakes, but but in this case, it is corned beef and rice. There we go. That was a direct hit. Maybe it's already dead. Ah, oh, shoot. I think it's already dead. No. That doesn't look very dead. Then again, this doesn't look... Well, I guess it looks kind of dead. All right. Never mind. That's dead. That's dead. Let's look at the Abris. It's about the limits of where I should be looking.
Yeah, 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 for sure. Basically, just a bunch of potatoes, tomatoes, onions, garlic, uh, corned beef. And at the very end, you throw in already cooked scrambled eggs and then kind of mix that in. Oh, man, so good. So, so good. Oh. I'm pretty sure those are static objects. But they are in range for guns. Hmm. I'm pretty sure those are static. I don't see anything else, really. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, okay, never mind. <laughs> the objective is already complete. Everything's dead. Alright, never mind. Good job, guys. We have five missiles left. We could restock before we take off again, so let's go ahead and do that. I did not notice, but apparently we got a message saying uh, this whole objective is already taken care of. So let's return back to base, restock on Vickers, and we'll move on to the next uh, buy target, BAI. could do, I think, is do this, do on roots, auto turn, do not altitude hold, and slow down. I was hoping to show off my sweet, sweet skills of not overflying where I want to land, but uh, yeah, that ain't, that ain't happening today. <laughs> That's all good, man. I, I have a little warning in the cockpit that tells me when I'm overspeeding. It's okay. Once that starts beeping, then I start slowing down. <laughs> Alright, lower those gears. Don't mind the uh, sound of the rotor blades. I know they they sound like they're breaking the sound barrier, but that's okay. They're meant to do that. Now, it's worth mentioning the KA-50 is definitely an aircraft I have not practiced much in. It should be apparent already. going on. Turn that shit off. There we go. Now, I can't remember if uh, if players spawn on the pads or if they spawn off the pads. Pretty sure they spawn off the pads. So that means if you want to rearm refuel, you'll have to make sure to land on them. Parking brake on. There we go. Not bad. Okay. Let's rearm refuel. Uh, actually, just rearm. I don't think I have to worry about refueling. And just these guys. Okay, cool. We're good on fuel. Copy. Hey, Pippin. Want some ice? There you go, buddy. Yeah. Good oh, boy.
Alright, the next target's gonna be <laughs> Spicy Pringles Launcher. So let's edit our current our current waypoint to go there instead. <laughs> uh, good question. I know that absolute necessity must be uncaged and used, but I'll be honest, I completely forgot. Here you go. There you go. I even turned it on and everything. I just didn't uncage it. <laughs> okay, waypoint. Enter waypoint 2. And change this so that it is... Oops. Waypoint 2. It's going to be air interdiction. Spicy Pringles launcher. It'll be 4504 4509. So I guess one is one out of ten is the same as eh, let's go zero. Enter zero zero uh, three eight one eight six nine three eight one eight six nine six nine it would be just over half so about four maybe yeah it should be roughly in the ballpark. I'll go to waypoint two. Alright, cool. Alright, we're all set to go. Let's go ahead and take off. Actually, before we take off, I'm going to take another bite, because Pippin is also... Whenever I take so long to eat, my dog is just frustrated. Because <laughs> he's constantly baking. To be fair, if I stop... If I stop treating him, he'll probably eventually stop begging one of these days, but, uh, I'm not a monster. Gear up. Wow, that's a little dangerous. I'm still in on-course route, or on-course mode. I didn't realize that. I'm honestly surprised I was able to land. Alright, let's pick up some speed, and we'll head on to that location. It's 23 kilometers away. We won't get too high, because I don't know what the area is like. And I want... <laughs> I want enough room to dive, but also not take so long to dive behind cover. Good enough. We'll set our current altitude as a desired altitude and keep on going. In fact, I can actually already see the targets out there. Looks like we've got tanks. Oh, definitely want to hit that guy first, so that's going to be the first thing I target. Let's see what else is out there. Wreckage, trees. That honestly looks like a plane wreckage or something. So our friendly A-10 may have died. Tanks, more tanks. Oh, looks like an Apache died right there. It might have been the same guy that was there earlier, or helping us out earlier, I should say. Okay, uh, yeah, let's hit this one first. So I'm going to keep my camera on him, and I'm going to stay eyeballs out until we get close. Theoretically, I could outrange this at 8.5, but the problem is I need to get altitude to do that, so uh, this is going to be a gamble, but uh, let's, let's see if we can pull it off. 16 kilometers away. That's one thing I do like about the uh, Black Shark over the Apache is that I can laser range things at like freaking <laughs> 30 kilometers. I mean, according to Volk, that's not 
how it's supposed to be, supposedly. Uh, or at least, if it is how it's supposed to be, it was a recent change. It wasn't always that way. Um, but yeah, that is definitely one thing I like about the Black Black Shark over the Apache, is just how far away it, could be, it can begin ranging. Because at this point, this is when George would start being able to see stuff, but he wouldn't be able to laser range up to that point. Whereas in the Black Shark, I can laser range up to that point. In fact, uh, let's actually start slowing down. Slow down to about 50. Okay. Um, apparently... Uh, please don't. Please don't. Please don't. Apparently, I <laughs> my speed sunk like a rock there. Uh, okay, so... Let's get back to a stable position at about 50 kph. Pretty sure this is in kph. kind of like slowly drift our way towards the target. Uh, right about there. That'll do. Auto turn is on. We're still on route. And target is 12 kilometers. Uh, we'll continue increasing our altitude until about 1,000, which is coming up pretty soon. slow down our vertical speed and there's a thousand then altitude hold is now on all right this should give us plenty of range hopefully that's enough for even an 8.5 shot but I guess we'll find out we already have contrast lock let's take a look at what else is out there looks like tank Whoa. that looks dead but I'm pretty sure that was an SA-8 Osa. Oh, that's an SA-9. That'll be second. Let's, uh, let's not get too distracted here. We'll focus on the Tunguska, because that'll be the biggest first threat. SA-9 will be second, and then we can do cleanup for everything else. And I think we have a friendly A-10 in the area. Slowly approaching it. We're at about 70 kilometers per hour. Looks like that SA-9 is already taking shots at our buddy. Dude, how am I the one that's keeping good distance <laughs> away from these things? Come on, man. I guess I could thank the, uh, the A-10 for doing Wild Weasel. Wherever he is. Okay, we're approaching. Let's go ahead and take a shot now and see what happens. I doubt it's going to reach, but once I hit 8.5, I'm going to slow down. In fact, I'm just going to slow down now. Auto hover engaged. New center point. Nice. Not bad. That was actually a pretty good shot. A uh, long distance shot, I should say. Next is going to be this SA-9, which is super far away, but <laughs> now I'm curious. If it falls short, because the rocket only goes for so long, right, but we're so high up. Yeah, let's, let's go for it. Let's see what happens. 9.6 kilometer shot. Let's see how this goes. Hmm. 
What? Hold up. Did I hit that? I wasn't paying attention. I was eating. Did I actually hit that? Oh, no. No, I definitely did not hit that. I'm pretty sure that was my vicar. Okay. Well, the A-10 is doing some work. Let's uh, go ahead and hit this closer target, which is the tank. Because I know we can hit that. There we go, good hit. Did that kill though? That did not kill. What the hell? Did I have to aim for its butt? Really? I don't think it's an already dead tank or anything like that. There we go. Very good. <clears throat> Next. That is a tree. That is nine kilometers away. I think that's a bit too far. But let's see if there's anything else that's closer. Doesn't look like it. <clears throat> yeah, I don't see anything that's closer. So I think it's safe to uh, march forward just a little bit. Aim for its butt. And slowly bring ourselves forward. I said slowly bring ourselves forward. And seven. And six. We'll bring it down to about 8 kilometers, because I don't think there's any uh, significant IR threats anymore. Two. Start slowing down. And slow down. There we go. New hover point. And let's go ahead and fire. Pretty sure I can fire now, right? Uh oh, maybe not. <laughs> maybe it's too far down. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> Do I have to aim down a little bit? There we go. Uh oh. Yeah. So I guess if I see... Oh, there goes that vicar. Okay, so I guess I'm a little too high up. Let's go ahead and uh, drop our altitude. So I'm pretty sure that box means uh, I'm out of bounds. <clears throat> yeah, the vicar is already, already trashed. There we go. Now we should be low enough. Oh no, come on. That was the last, at the last second. I don't think it's being guided anywhere. Dang it, it's such a waste. Let's try it again. What is going on with my Vickers? Are they, okay, that looks like it's being guided. No, it isn't. What the heck is going on, man? Alright, we're going to drop to about 750 and see if... What is going on? Like... Maybe that's the issue? We only have three left. Where are they going? What is going on? Okay, I have no idea what's going on, guys. My Vickers are just getting trashed right now. I have no idea why. I only have three left. 
And there's seven targets. Okay, we're at 750. Let's stop decreasing. And altitude hold. I have no idea what's going on. Is there, like, a timeout? Like, is there a time limit on how long Vickers are good for? That doesn't seem right, does it? Maybe the laser code is uh, messed up. Which doesn't make sense, because it should just be uh, reading it from the ship, right? Okay, you know what? Let's uh, decrease our altitude even more. Too far. I mean, if I was too far, it would be still guiding onto the target, but it would just end up dropping short. So I don't know if that's the issue. Oh, heading hold. So I don't believe that's the issue. We're going to drop all the way down to 500. Hey, buddy. Go to 5.5? Yeah, sure. In fact, let's uh, let's turn that to auto instead. Uh, I don't know. 5.5 seems pretty close. I don't want to get that close. I've already landed 9 kilometer shots. So I don't believe that's a problem. Sit. Speak. Speak. Good boy. So I'm going to try doing this by using the on, on HUD cues instead. And let's altitude hold. Then what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to steer that reticle onto the circle. And hopefully that'll give me a good shot. No shot. What is going on? Can the laser burn out? Like, what if I reset? If I reset... Bring this down. Bring that over the target. Oh, there's... <laughs> there's a man pad right there. <laughs> I just noticed. Um, I'm getting no laser ranging information. I wonder if... Does, does the laser burn out? If I use it too much? Let's see. Uh, I've got my Vicar selected. The ring is already in the other ring. Uh, master arm is on. Set to auto. I'm getting no clearance to shoot. That is strange. That is very strange. It's Yeah, it's almost like... It's almost like the laser's burnt out or something, or it's just quit working. Does that happen in the, uh... In the, uh, what's it called? In the K-50? If so, that's new to me. Also, what is he shooting at? Oh, I think that might have been an Apache or something. Uh, warning code, warning code. I don't see a warning code or anything. There's nothing that's on right now. Did I accidentally turn off? Nope. AC generator's still on. Laser warning system is on. UV-26 is on. INU is on. I mean, systems are still working as far as I can tell. It's just not lazing. It's strange. What is going on? If I uh, deselect and switch to, like, cannon, does this give me ranging? 
see no countdown on the HUD. I don't know if this is going to be accurate, but let's find out. In fact, let's, uh... Where's that man pad? Wait, am I blind? Wasn't there, like, a man pad right here? Yeah, I'm getting no ranging information. Hmm, very interesting. Well, we might have to go old school and try to take him out with our gun. I could do the smart thing and just get in a new helicopter, but... It's also getting close to my calling it quits for the night, so... I am a little tempted <laughs> to do this. How many targets are left out there? Seven? Oh my god, I wish I, I, wish I knew what was happening. So if I... Wait a sec. Am I just out of Vickers? No? Definitely not out of Vickers. Let's turn that off. Auto turn. Maybe target. Yeah, still no ranging. All right, well, let's go. <laughs> let's go try to gun, I guess. Wait, but if I'm getting no ranging information, that means my gun's not going to be accurate. No. Okay. Uh, what else can I do? Is there any way to get that back? You no, know I'm going to Google that really quick. Let's see what that says. KA-50, laser, burn out. Uh, you mean the lightning pod? Nope. Operation for each flight series, 16 cycles, 10 seconds, 5 second interval between cycles, interval between series. Am I looking at the correct... So, laser range finder operation mode for one flight. Series, each series consists of 16 cycles of 10 seconds with a five second interval between the cycles. So interval between the series, I have to wait 30, oh wait, minimum 30 seconds or is that a minute, like 30 minute wait between? Page 454 of the manual, everyone I train, I tell to fire, hit the fire extinguisher and repair after each flight. It is rare, but if you are going to be using your laser range finding a lot during a flight, you could lose it on your second flight. So best just get in the habit of repairing. Oh boy. Well, that explains that. So there is a limit to how often you can use the laser range finder. Hey, Lucky. Uh, yes, I have. Uh, it is available. It is a work in progress because I'm still putting it through its paces. But um, yeah, just go to my usual album on uh, Imager, and that will have the current work in progress version. If you want a quick look at it, here it is on screen. Uh, I don't know if you just want to screenshot this or something, but uh, that's there and available if you want to grab that. I believe that's the latest version as well. Looks like it. So feel free to grab that guy. You've got 10 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1, and lost a chance. Yeah, there's the layouts. But like I said, the album is in the usual link on my gamepad tutorials. Okay, so yeah, it sounds like there is laser burnout. So I can do the smart thing. In fact, I think I am going to do the smart thing and just go back and repair. So we're going to do that really quick. And hopefully there will still be targets for us to mop up when we get back. But good to know. It is something that I have just learned today.
Reset. And then that, that, and let's put that over, I guess over here? No, over here. Yeah, there we go. Somewhere in that direction. All right, cool. On route, and auto turn. Actually, just, just auto turn, it should be fine. That was a bit violent. There we go. Yeah, no problem, man. Hope you enjoy. And also, if you find any issues with it, remember it's a work in progress, so feel free to leave a comment if you have any problems with it. Like if there's anything that doesn't feel intuitive, it doesn't feel right. Or if you do like it and would like to see something else bound to that particular layout, like something that in a available slot that's not used, let me know. One, in, one, th <laughs> one thing in particular is, of course, left modifier and D-pad right. The all-important windshield wiper. Looks like we've got a friendly helo out in the distance. And I can already see the far up right there. So let's go ahead and target that. Yeah, there it is. Contrast lock. Okay, and while we're on route, I'm gonna finish my dinner. Sorry, Pippin, there's like one spoonful left. You can't have any. Mm, so good. All right, I'll be right back. Hey, All right, and I'm back. Just put my dish away. So the plan is apparently, if we hit the fire extinguisher, that will cause enough <laughs> that will cause enough damage. <laughs> that sounds so weird to say, but that'll cause enough damage to force us to need a repair, which will then Warning. repair. Under Warning under Warning. attack. Under attack. Okay, well I'm not going to risk that. Let's go ahead and dive. What is out there? Was it? Oh, you bastard. <laughs> God damn it. So apparently, a friendly, <laughs> a friendly Apache can trigger your laser warning system. Son of a bitch. Okay, uh, so let's set auto turn on, on route mode, <clears throat> then we'll start slowing down because we're getting pretty close to it. I'm keeping an eye on my speed gauge that's to the left of my ADI, the main ADI. I'm trying to put it at around the 50 kilometers an hour point. So I'm just holding down force trim and holding cyclic back until my airspeed reaches 50. To be honest, I should probably aim for like 25. There we go. Turn off altitude hold and descend. So the goal now is to make it so that this image that's here on the, the monitor 
I want to make it so that it's only getting bigger. So basically I'm approaching it directly and not uh, moving left, right, forward, or back. So the way it looks, it's just expanding. It looks like it's just growing in size. That's exactly what I want. In fact, let's make ourselves go here. This is kind of like a cheaty way to land because you're just using your navigation, your autopilot to, to land for you, basically. But hey, it works. All you need to do is make sure to manage a collective so that you're going where you need to go. And of course, as you slow down, you need slightly more collective to uh, maintain altitude. And now that we are here, I'm going to turn off route mode and control it from here on. <laughs> You're the master of la crash landing the KF-50? Eh. Hey, man. You know what? You do you. There is a prize, and you went for it. Alright, parking brake on. And nice and easy. Okay, so supposedly, all I have to do is hit the fire extinguisher, and then repair. <laughs> this is going to be so weird, but let's do it. Ooh. Ooh. I don't know. I don't know what's... There we go. Left and right are hit. I don't know what's happening. I assume that would have put my engine out. But uh, let's... Uh, let's instead shut the engine off. So how do I do that? Do I do this and then stop? Then that and stop? Is that how that works? Throttle down? Oh, duh. Cut off. That makes sense. Engine cut off. Fuel shut off. Pumps off. Rotor brake on. There we go. That's how we do it. Thank you. Fuel cut off? Yeah, thank you. Okay. So, engines are now off. Let's see if I can repair. Let me shut off my engine. The engines are off. Do I have to turn off the battery or something? Maybe that? Ground crew... Repair. Copy. Yeah. 170 seconds. Well, I guess you're going to be waiting here with me for three minutes. Ugh. So how's it going, guys? Welcome to the stream. I hope you all are enjoying it. In the meantime, let's take a look at what else everyone else is doing. We've got a AH-64D Apache. Uh, let me turn down the game volume. So it's not ear-piercing to be next to this guy. Looks like he's going to be working the target we were just at. Uh, there is a total of seven units left there. This Harrier has all the hurt on him. And he just fired. Let's see if that actually scores anything. Uh-oh. <laughs> I think he may have forgotten to change his laser code. Or he, or he did change his laser code, but it's not at the correct laser. Uh, not at the correct code. No! Don't do the Harrier like that, man! Ranger 1! Change your laser... Oh, no! Why are you... You are literally being fired at. You are literally being fired at. And you're just casually listing to the right. Come on. Come on, buddy. You can do it. You can do it. Get out of there. Get out of there and change your laser code to 1688. Oh, and... Lagging out. Lagging out. Okay. Change your laser code 1688. And you'll be golden, because chances are... Oh no, the bug's back. 
I thought they solved that bug with the center pylon on the teapot. Oh well. Yeah. Change your laser code 1688, because chances are you did not change that with the ground crew before you took off. Meanwhile, this Apache... Uh-oh. That's going to cause some uh, motion sickness. That Apache is trying to run in, but so far is being unsuccessful. Oh, that's cool. Your, your baklava setting... Is that how you pronounce it? Your setting for the fire retardant mask actually shows in the external model for your specific aircraft, because I didn't turn my setting off. My, my pilots are still wearing the mask. So that's pretty cool that the uniqueness shows for other players. Uh, that's really neat. Alright, where are we at? Why did he bark at you? Uh, because I still have food. So I was going to give him a last little bit of rice. Wait, is it not repairing? Is it repaired? Wait, did three minutes already pass? Let's uh, rearm refuel and find out. Oh, never mind. One forty seconds. Still, still waiting. So once I hear, uh, once I see something that says. Rearming, refueling, then I know it's done. Wait, did that pause because I was in F10 view? Do I have to be in the cockpit for that to work? Oh no. Oh, that's so dumb. Hey, Wynn, how's it going? Doing pretty good. Thank you for stopping by. I hope you enjoy yourself. Currently, our plan is to repair at this FARP. And then go attack this uh, set of this remaining units that are at this location. But it looks like we have a friendly uh, an Apache and Harrier try doing their best to do something about it, but they can't seem to get their weapons off. The Harrier has fired at least, yeah, it looks like one APKWS, and it did not successfully guide. And this Harrier, or sorry, and this Apache is doing an ingress, but then just immediately breaks off, so... I don't know if he knows how to operate his weapons just yet. I can speed up? How can I speed up? Are you talking about with Control Z? I can't do that because this is a multiplayer server, uh, server unfortunately. Uh, my specs. I am currently... Oh, I, actually, I recently updated my specs. I upgraded my CPU from a Intel Core i9-9900. Oh, what? Oh, I just rearmed. Oh, that's right. Technically, you could still rearm refuel if you're waiting for the repair to kick off. Okay. Uh, yeah, so I recently upgraded from a Intel Core i9-9900 to a Intel Core i7-12700. I uh, so basically 12th generation i7. But because of that, I also needed to up upgrade my motherboard to be able to support the LGA-1700 uh, socket. And I also up uh, upgraded my RAM to DDR5 because it's a DDR5 uh, RAM slot. So those are my specs. Then, of course, on top of that, I still have my, my already existing... <laughs> that looks crazy. It's just flapping in the wind. That is nuts. That is weird. That's just flapping around like that? Is that supposed to happen? Has it been doing that the whole time? No, it's just because it was airborne. Oh, that is weird. Anyways. Okay, so we're now repaired. Uh, so let's go ahead and start up. Systems are on. APU on. Uh, boost pumps. Let's go ahead and start the APU. Close our cockpit door. Increase our volume back up to 100. APU is on. Start left engine.
Uh oh. Am I doing something wrong? Left engine? Is because I have all this crap turned on still? I mean, my generators are off, but then again, I don't think that would matter. No! Did I do all that waiting for nothing? What do I have to do? Hold on. So I have batteries on. I have APU on. APU is ready to go. I've selected left engine. I hit start, and I... Well, let's... I guess... Set it to cut off first. And then hit start. Oh no. What's going on? Maybe the EEGs? Actually, no. I can't remember what these are actually used for. I don't believe those need to be off for this to work. APU is on, because I see the lights are running. It's at 6. Hit engine start for left engine. And then engine cutoff valve. Fuel pumps are, uh, forward fuel pumps are on. Generators, I mean, I don't think it matters that those are off or on. What is going on? Is it because the crossfeed valve was open? That doesn't make sense because I would have to flip the switch. What if I just turn everything off that I don't need? Right at this moment. Turn these guys off. Uh, did you post a KA50 gamepad layout? I don't remember seeing one. Yes, I did. Uh, there is a KA50 in the album. It is relatively new. I was working on it over the weekend, and today, tonight is the first real test of it during a multiplayer like streamed session. So go ahead and check out my usual album. It should be there. Uh, if not, I'll put up the image right here for you. Uh, there we go. Here it is zoomed in, so feel free to grab a screenshot of that while it's up. You've got 10 seconds. Meanwhile, I am hiding the fact that I am totally not just respawning in a new KA50. Totally not doing that. Don't worry about it. Oh! Don't worry about that sound either. That does that was not spectator mode. That was just um that was just a really loud hornet that flew right by us. Don't worry about it. Request rounding. Oh, you were oh no, angry. Ah, you were you're totally right. You are totally right. It was the rotor brake. That's what it was. In fact, we could test that right now. Uh, let's go ahead and turn on the batteries. Turn on APU and forward pumps. Now let's test it really quick. We're going to hit the APU and start that up. Close our cockpit door. Okay, APU is on. Now left engine start. Let's hit start. Nothing is happening, which is what happened earlier. So now let's turn off the rotor brake. And now let's hit start on that left engine and there it is that was indeed the problem oh thanks very much angry that is yet another lesson learned in this venture of learning the ka50 nothing else necessary Okay. Oh, I should probably put that to idle. I'm all looking at the uh, 
the cockpit shadows of the rotor blades and their... Uh-oh. Did I break my engine? Oh, God damn it! <laughs> okay, hold up. Stop. Hit that. Give it a minute. Because I totally forgot to t uh, hit the cutoff valve at startup, so I'm waiting for this to come back to zero. Oh, man. Once again, guys, this is not an aircraft I use very often. So apologies if this is at all frustrating, but I am learning it right beside you. Or right along with you. I and you. Okay, looks like we could try again now. So hit start and then hit that. There we go, that's what we want. That should start rotating soon. There she goes. Let's see. Fire system. Abris. Let's just go ahead and turn this on and this on. Alright, so a few things we learned today. Make sure you don't screw up your start procedure. Uh, another thing is that the laser rangefinder has a limited number of uses, so chances are if you've already done one sortie, you can't do a second. So let's say you kill a bunch of targets, go back to base, rearm, and then take off again. Laser range finder is not going to be a good way. So you'll definitely want to either respawn in a new KA-50 or hit the fire extinguisher to force a proper repair on your KA-50. Which sucks, but it is what it is. I guess that is one of the nice things about the Apache is you can laser range all you want all day and it won't matter. Uh, is it possible to buddy laser for a fixed wing with K50? No, I don't believe so because the uh, I think the laser code that's used by Russian aircraft in general I believe is laser code 1113 and while US aircraft can I believe they can go that far down in their laser code to to like emit a laser at that range. I don't believe the weapons are calibrated to go into that range. Um, and similarly, or not similarly, but another uh, another difficulty of lasing between the two types of aircraft, Western versus Eastern, is that the KA-50, for example, the way that the Vickers are guided is by riding a beam, in that they're looking they're not looking for a beam at the target, but they're looking they're looking back at the KA-50 or the Su-25T and looking for a laser emitting from it from behind. And that's how it gets guided onto a target. Uh, what did you say the duty cycle was for the... Oh, uh, the duty cycle, I believe, is... Okay, I'll just read you exactly verbatim per a forum post. It says, back in 2020, February 2020, laser range finder operation mode for one flight series each series consists of 16 cycles of 10 seconds with 5 second intervals between the cycles. So interval between the series is 30 minutes. So each series consists of 16 cycles of 10 seconds of laser uh, emission with 5 second, second interval between each 10 seconds. And once those 16 cycles are used up, then I guess you have to wait 30 minutes for another series to become available, or just repair, I guess. So if you, uh, I mean, I don't know how accurate that is, like that whole 30 minute part, because I could be reading it wrong. It says MIN colon 30. For all I know, what they're saying is the minimum is 30 seconds, uh, but that doesn't quite make sense to me. So it's possible that if you do a mission that's a 30 minute flight, you'll go out, kill a bunch of stuff, then take 30 minutes to fly back, by the time you go back out to kill a bunch of other stuff, you'll have given the laser plenty of time to recoup and then be usable again. But I, again, I'm not a K50 guy, I don't know how true that is, but hopefully that gets you, gives you some ideas. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Tell me about it. Um, you know what? Considering I'm getting pretty close to the end of my night, 
there is a bunch of targets that's out by Krimsk that I could try to take on. So I'm not going to respawn at Krimsk. I will fly down there and try to take him out because there's a total of 12 targets there. Uh, that way we have a nice little flight on the way. But that will be the last objective for the night, then I'll be calling it quits. Uh, I believe everything's on, so let's do a quick look. We got INU, we got UV-26, we got the laser warning system, and whatever this is down here, I believe. Yep. Uh, we've got NAV, IFF, standby ADI, because that's always important to have, apparently. <laughs> uh, let's see. Let's go ahead and shut off our APU, because we don't need that anymore. Uh, generators are online. We have this at operation, hold modes. Uh, we've got data link and targeting stuff so that we create targets not based on our own ship, but what we're looking at. Uh, doo -doo -doo. How much RAM am I running? I'm running 64 gigs. 64 gigs with, uh, I think it's tuned to 36. I'm pretty sure the timing is at 36. Oh, and let's go ahead and throttle up. Okay, I think we're good to go. So we'll just fly over to Krimsk and try to knock out those enemy forces that are out by it, trying to take it back. In fact, let's go ahead and... Go to nav. I'm going to do something that I learned recently from Volk. Apparently, you can go to search, look for an airport, and then I will just scroll down to Krimsk. There we go. Select it, and then hit 2. There you go. It is just out in that direction somewhere. And a little more to the left. There we go. Straight out that way. Okay, cool. Parking brake off. Helmet mounted sight away, and let's go ahead and take off. Landing gear up. And let's head on over to Krimsk to save the day. Of course, by the time we get there, it might be <laughs> already dealt with by, uh, by friendly forces in the area. Who knows? But let's go ahead and step on the gas. We can already see the smoke, the green smoke out by Krimsk. That's where we're going, roughly. And the enemy forces are just beyond that. Oh my god, what was that? Did they just get shot down? Oh boy. You know what? That might be what we're looking for. Let's, uh, let's put our crosshair there. Auto turn on routes. Yeah. So I feel like those might be different targets. It's kind of weird that I just saw someone get shot down over there, but I'm pretty sure those are our units, aren't they? It's kind of weird that that particular area is on fire <laughs> unless it's uh, blue on blue. Okay, honestly, it could very well be blue on blue. Uh, but Krimsk. Krimsk is out in this direction. In fact, that's Krimsk right there. So let's, uh, let's focus on going there first. And then if the targets end up not being in that location, then we'll switch over to where all that smoke is. But I'm pretty sure our our particular area we want to focus on is basically right next to Krimsk. Uh, let's go ahead and reduce altitude, or get our altitude under control, I should say. Altitude hold. Okay. Yeah, so I see units right here. What is that? I think those are things we care about. Uh, oh, no, those are airfield assets. So what we want to murder is this guy? Oh yeah, there we go. Those are our targets. So starting here, because I don't see anything else in the uh, longitudinal plane. Oh yeah, those are what we want. And yeah, looks like 
Those are indeed what we're supposed to be hitting. Okay, cool. There we have it. So we'll start off with this guy because he's the closest and he's probably the biggest threat being an SA-9. That's a tank. That's another tank. That's another tank. That is a Shilka. That's a tank. That's a tank. That is a tank. And that's a tank. That's a SA-9 plus Manpad. Those will be our second biggest threats. That is a friendly <laughs> parachuting down onto a tank. Okay, so two SA-9s, one Manpad, and then the rest are tanks. So we'll focus on the SA-9s and then Manpad. And then we'll try to clean up the remainder of the tanks once we get uh, once we deal with the biggest threats. And let's increase our speed to 200. And you know what? Before I call it quits for the night, let's see if I can get a a nice shot. A nice shot of our KF-50 so I can get a, ne a reasonably good um, thumbnail for the video. Something like that, maybe? Just dead center? Oh, I should probably get rid of the gamepad as well. Oh, wait, you know what? Let's do that. Could also do look kind of like a looking towards the target area shot. Something like this. Do this. Align it so that the K50 is looking at the target area. Zoom in. Scroll out. That looks pretty neat, right? There's the targets out there. Not that it's really going to show in a thumbnail, but still the, the idea is there. Yeah, that'll look good. A little bit in the top left corner of the framing. Yeah, that'll be good. Print screen. Go back in the cockpit. Uh, and I'm going to put that in MS Paint. Alright, cool. Thumbnail's good to go. Options. Alright, cool. Let's murder. We're 17 kilometers away in closing. Traveling at about 200 kilometers. Looks like we have a friendly SU-25T looking to mop up as well. And it looks like an A-10 just fired off a Maverick. Well, that kind of sucks. I was kind of hoping to do that myself. Oh my god, what is that? Is that just smoke? It's like they fired a smoke rocket at it or something. Oh no, he just fired. Oh, he just fired at someone. That's what that is. Well, we'll continue focusing on this guy. This will be our, our main threat for the time being. We'll let the A-10 and the SU-25T deal with all the other things. Yeah, it looks like that's the A-10 right there. You guys, in case you guys can't see, it's here at the crosshair. And same strategy as before. We're going to stay out at about 8.5 kilometers, and then take pot shots from a distance. Oh no, what happened? Someone died? Someone got shot, that's for sure. Man, it's like people don't know their ranges. <laughs> Watch, I get absolutely murdered for stepping into a Wes. <laughs> oh, and there's another... Okay, you know what? I'm going to start slowing down. So that A-10 is getting fired on by these SA-9s, which, once again, were my first... Oh no, the A-10! Did he get shot down? Oh no, he did. He's smoking, at least. Continue 
continue slowing down, continue slowing down. Yeah, the A10 is not having a good day. And we're approaching eight and a half, so we need to come to a very, very quick stop. We're at eight and a half. Come on, come to a stop, come to a stop, come to a stop. Eight point three on route and there we go, auto hover is engaged. Set as a manual, set those guys up. Altitude hold and fire. Very nice. Alright, cool. Let's see if this does it. Should. Good kill. Move on to the next SA9, which is off to the right. Oh, that A10 did some work, though, that's for sure. Did not focus on the important things, though. Oh, what is that? Whatever it is, looks dead. Alright, SA9. go and to make sure our friendlies in the area don't get picked off by this man pet I'll go ahead and just tag this guy and good kill countdown is good Okay, uh, what else is out here? Is the auto turn on? Yes, it is. Uh, moving ground target just in case. Looks like someone else is doing work out there. We'll target these uh, these tanks next. They're a little far, but let's see if we can make it happen. Oh, just keep an eye on that. I think that might be the uh, frog foot in the area. That might be a little too far. Yeah, it was too far. Damn. How about this guy? Yeah, we could probably hit this one. 8.6? Seems too bad. But it is going to be a front shot. And that's where most of the armor is. I don't know how well this is going to do. Oh, no. Did we win? No, that was a waste of a shot. Ah, damn it. Anyways, you can see here on the top right, buy target, clear black bass, uh, back blast, destroyed. So once you've destroyed a target, uh, like, for example, that particular area where we were trying to hit, uh, it will just despawn the remaining units. That's how you know you won. All right, boys, and that is it. So I'm going to go ahead and park the KE-50 down here at Krimsk, and then we'll shut down and call it a night. Auto hover off, altitude hold off, and let's go ahead and reset everything, put away my helmet-mounted sights. All right, let's get down there. Oh, in fact, I can try using my same strategy I was doing earlier and use this guy to say I want to park here on this uh, apron here. Target it like that. And then auto turn on, on root mode on. Then all I need to do is adjust my collective so that the picture is not moving up, down, left, or right. It's simply just getting bigger. So I have to be in a slight descent, and it should be good enough. Of course, <laughs> I'll be uh, crossing the runway, so this could actually be pretty dangerous. So what I could do instead is I'll just stop right above it, and then just engage uh, descent mode and come to a come to a landing. A 
looks like we're going forward slightly, so let's push our descent a little faster. So our uh, rate of descent is now just under 5. I'm looking here on the vertical speed indicator. Looks like we're still creeping forward, so let's descend even faster. We're now at negative 5. That's looking better, but still creeping a little forward, so let's go a little faster. In fact, uh, before I do anything, let's see. Looks like he's just going to be doing a pass. He. Looks like he's coming in for a landing, but it's a pretty long final if so. Yeah, I think what we'll do is we'll just stop right above the, the apron, and then just engage auto hover and then descend. In fact, we could see that SU-25 there off to our right. It doesn't look like he's landing, he's a little too high up to land. Our, our nav lights just in case. Anti-collision. On. And blade lights. <laughs> That's funny. Alright, and let's go ahead and come to a stop. And auto hover sending a little too quickly, landing gear down, auto turn should be off, on, is it just going to make me go in circles, like what's going on here? Like this is me not touching, oh, is your landing gear down dude? Yes it is, wow, he did go for it, alright, that's fine. Auto turn now off. So I don't trust what is below me, so I'm going to go ahead and, <laughs> and land in the grass instead. Because I don't actually know what's directly below me. Okay, and now, because I have it bound, I can do descent mode, which is right modifier and d-pad down. Up into a point. And then it'll stop me just before I reach the ground. There it is. And parking brake engaged. There we go. Oh, oh. Uh oh, not what I wanted. There we go. All right, so let's go ahead and reorient ourselves a little bit. And we'll go ahead and get to the actual parking. Now we do need to be careful because these are technically parking spots. So in case someone does... Oh! Okay, and we'll just barrel right through I guess. In case someone does spawn, we want to go in between the parking spots and not on the lines. Sup, buddy? Russian brothers. Oh, God, that was a horrible accent. I don't even know what that was. I'm going to reset. <laughs> I've had master arm on this whole time. Okay.
All right, gentlemen, that is going to be it for the night. I'm just going to do a quick shutdown process. I don't claim to know what the proper shutdown process is, but I will do something that will turn everything off. Collective lowered. Parking brake is on. All right. Well, guys, thank you all for watching. If you like this video, please make sure to leave a like, leave a subscribe, leave a comments uh i don't really don't know what youtube is asking people to do nowadays but feel free to do whatever it is to show me your appreciation or if you didn't like it feel free to hit that dislike button assuming that still exists um i keep in mind i have no set schedule for my times that i stream so feel free to uh hit that bell icon so that you're notified of the next time that i decide to stream and hopefully it'll be at a convenient hour for you guys for those who don't know, my name is Tuvas. I create gamepad tutorials specifically for controls to help people who don't have things like a HOTAS to, uh, to help them get into DCS and enjoy the thing that I enjoy, despite not having a gamepad. Uh, that turns off. So if you think DCS sounds like a cool game, because I guarantee you it is indeed a cool game, but you don't have the money to afford a gamepad, or sorry, afford a HOTAS, which is a hands-on throttle stick or a joystick and throttle, uh, give my tutorials a shot. It's any one of my gamepad tutorials. My most recent one is the one that is entitled How to Set Up How to Set Up a Gamepad in DCS, or something along those lines. It has a picture of a hornet, and it has also in the title something like How to Fly Around Like Maverick, just to get the clickbait stuff going. <laughs> Um, so feel free to give that a watch. Okay, hold on. Operate needs to go there. And hopefully you too will be able to join us in the skies of DCS, despite all you having is a gamepad. Because honestly, you can go a long ways, despite only having a gamepad. Uh, turn those off. Batteries off. It is so difficult for me to, uh, to come up with <laughs> things to say like that while I'm trying to do a shutdown process for the first time ever uh, okay so that is that this guy is right click and roll yeah there we go okay rotor brake on roll is all the way down oh you know what I forgot to pull, pull my gamepad back up on the screen there it is uh, let's see. And I think that is pretty much everything. All right, guys. Well, like I said, thank you all for watching. If you like this video, please leave, leave a like. And if you really like this and would like to see more of this kind, uh, kind of stuff, make sure to hit that subscribe button. And tune in next time for some more DCS World live stream. Take care, guys. Have a good day. Now, I wonder if this works. Does this work if my battery's off? So my battery has to be on, at least? Oh yeah, there it goes. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching. Have a good one. <laughs>
Dude, guys, I can't believe that freaking worked. <laughs>